Welcome to JLive. I'm Jay Arts Executive Director Laura Mandel, and it's great to be here with you for JLive, our Jay Arts series of virtual cultural experiences that bring us together to explore and celebrate the diverse world of Jewish art, culture, and creative expression. We're bringing you bite sized conversations with the best Boston area talent. Today, we have a really special treat. Not just one of the most accomplished Boston artists, but actually two, and their grandmother and granddaughter. Nancy Schoen is the brains behind the iconic Make Way for Duckling sculpture on Boston Common. And Mia is the mosaic artist who recently moved back home from Israel and is doing some really inspiring and exciting new work in Boston. I feel so lucky to be with them because they are basically Boston art royalty. So welcome Mia and Nancy. Thank you. Hi, thank you. So um, let's start by looking at some of your work. Show us some, some images here and talk us through them. <laughs> oh, oh, that's easy. <laughs> I'm on Myrtle the Turtle, which is on Myrtle Street. It's a sea turtle. And um, I'm just happy we just installed it. So that's a picture of me on her. <laughs> and that just went in what, last year, right? A year and a half ago, maybe? Yes. That's about right, yeah. It's great. It's such a beautiful example of something you've created that's not only beautiful, but fun for kids, which yeah. I love. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> that's great. Oh, well, that's my <laughs> two-year-old great-grandson, Charlie, on a snail that has just gone off to the foundry, and it's going to be in the children's hospital on the 12th floor. So around January, um, there'll be some sort of an event when he will be, or she, you know, it's Charlie, will be uh, in the hospital for you to see and to sit on and to play with and bring your grandchildren to see and play with. That's awesome. And next, oh. <laughs> That's my COVID-19 sculpture, which speaks to the horrors of what our administration is doing these days in not paying any attention to the 180, 190,000 people who are going to die with the lack of their, their paying attention to anything. So you can go online and watch a whole interview with Nancy talking about this piece, but um, can you describe it to us a little bit? Because I love how so much of your work or all of your work is so contemporary and relevant to a moment. And can you just tell, describe the piece a little bit for us? Well, it represents something called the caduceus, which is the emblem of the medical profession. And immediately when the COVID started they came to the attention and they did all sorts of wonderful things so it looks like it's an angel and there's a little halo on top of the head now one of the one of the serpents is a good serpent the other serpent represents our administration and unfortunately that administration is spitting fire and at the end of the little tips are the COVID virus that they are spreading all over the poor people who are being recipients of this horrible, horrible disease. Yeah. All I it think. makes me sad to think about it, but that's really an incredible piece, Nancy. Thank you. It's very unlike um, what I usually do. Yeah. Um, and of um, course in your studio, yeah, nothing much to say about that. I'm in my studio <laughs> and I'm working on a piece. And I'm, as always, very happy to be in my studio, my favorite place to be. Thank you. <laughs> I want to add, if you look in back of her, you can see there are saws and a lot of tools. So she's very handy with tools. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. And uh, Mia, I think we have some of your pieces. Yeah. Uh, so this is a piece in Tel Aviv, um, which is right near Kikar Tarim, um, right, right near the beach. And this is one of my first public pieces that I did. And I wanted to put the, the words, I love you so much, because it's sort of a beaten down square that sort of needed some new life. 
in it. And um, it's across the street, formerly was a strip club. And so I thought I should put something sort of positive uh, right there. And many people walk by it. So um, I thought I love you so much would be really nice statement. And the woman who's here is um, actually a Holocaust survivor who lives in the area. And she was very involved when I was installing it. She would come by uh, once in a while and say hi. So she came to the opening and held this heart up when we took her picture. Really nice. Love that. Well, and it's so telling of both of your works, how there's so much community investment and involvement. Yeah, there are lots of always unexpected people who kind of connect to the work who you just, you just don't know because it's public who will sort of become a part of it. Yeah, so cool. And next we have? Uh, yeah, so this is a piece at Save a Child's Heart which is a nonprofit organization based in Holon, which is outside of Tel Aviv. And it serves kids who are um, getting different heart procedures done, mostly from developing countries. Um, and they also serve kids who are in the West Bank and Gaza and train doctors from all over the world. So this, this piece is in their residential center, right where the kids live. And so um, all of the kids are very involved in it. And you can see, even though we're all, they're wearing masks, it's not COVID, but they're wearing masks to protect them from the dust. And so wow. it's sort of funny to have masks in a different time, but um, there are lots of hearts and it's, you can see on the right side that there's an airplane flying towards a heart. So that's this piece. It's beautiful. And I, the other thing I love about both of your works is the scale alone is so incredible. Just the <laughs> magnitude of these pieces. Yeah, because um, though this isn't a public piece of art, I thought it would be kind of during this this time, I've been really getting into collage. You know, in a way it's similar to mosaics and that they're fractured pieces using repurposed materials. Um, I'm not doing as many walls at the moment, but I am still creating. So you can see how you can jump from one thing to another. So. These are gorgeous. I, they, these are paper? They're all from recycled magazines. So they look like glass. It's incredible. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Wow. But it's You're all welcome. using the same concepts. So. Oh, love it. All right. So now that we've had an opportunity to look at some of your work, I love that um, you can tell in a way that you're related because I think there's some similar thought processes. Um, and I know that a lot of this goes back to family, which is so important to both of you and to your work. So can you tell us a little bit about your family and, you know, the inspiration within it? Well, I guess... Nancy, you want to kick us off? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, I go back to my dad, who was a florist. He was sort of the Winstons of his day. And um, being a florist, one has to be very artistic. And so he was very artistic and doing what he did because flowers, people design things all the time. And that's, so I, I sort of feel like he was almost the, uh, one of the major pieces in all of um, my children, my grandchildren, and what happened. And well, me, I guess. <laughs> Anyhow, um, being in the flower business, you have to understand a lot about flowers. They don't last. So you have to do something about what do you do with flowers? Well, you have to work very quickly. So he was a very good businessman. So not only do I feel that I learned a lot about him, uh, his work artistically, but I learned a lot about business because when you have a perishable item, you have to do something very quickly and you have to think. Also, um, I worked in the flower business from the time I was a little kid. And so I learned a lot about how to deal with customers. And my father did something that I have learned. You always give your customers a little more than they expect. And so this was a lesson that I learned. He used to give everybody a big red rose before they left his flower shop. So they always got something special, even if they didn't order something. Anyway, my mother was also rather, um, she, was, she painted a bit, she dressed beautifully, she set a beautiful table. So my whole background was sort of artistic and I got a lot of encouragement from my children, from my parents, which I gave, I think, in turn to my children. Two of my girls are artists. 
professional artist. And there's all this art in our family. So I think Nia will tell you more about the next generation because she's part of it. Okay. Yeah, so Mia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can imagine <laughs> growing up in this family, um, being born into it, I think with our the parents' generation who are all creative, I think everybody, it doesn't matter even if you're in an artistic field, everybody knows how to work with their hands and create. So I think growing up um, in that environment, we, this, the term starving artist was just not in our vocabulary, especially because the matriarch of our family was a successful, is a successful sculptor. So, um, and then my aunts also, you know, and, and my cousins and everybody and my sister, every, everyone's creating all the time. So um, in terms of like specifically to my grandmother, Nancy, um, like what she says, always give something extra. I mean, like I just hear those terms top down in my life like whenever I finish a commission I give something extra too and um, just thinking you know when we write when I write proposals or when I have an idea I mean I'm always going to her for advice or different members of our of our family and um, so I we're just born into it can't it, like it doesn't matter what field you're in I think all of us are really into creativity and whenever there's a family wedding everybody is like hopping you know on to do the flowers and so like I think something that my grandmother always has said is that everything is designed by something by someone and so you know growing up with that mentality that like anything you use or anything you see was actually designed by a human makes you aware that people are making things all the time so it was a great, it's been a great environment to grow up in and definitely has influenced me in my work. <laughs> well, cool. I think it's very clear that it's important in your family to really value the arts because it comes through in all of your work. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so something else that I think is interesting is that Israel is pretty central to both of you and both of your stories. Can you tell me a little bit why? Uh, I guess this is mine. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> in 1979, my husband had, he was a professor uh, and he had a sabbatical. So we took our four children to Jerusalem, which was quite an experience because they all had their lives and they were a little bit reluctant to, <laughs> to come, but they did. And uh, actually one of them married an Israeli. <laughs> So we went and I was lucky enough to uh, find a friend who had a, um, a studio. So I was able to rent a studio, but there were no art casters at that time, uh, sculpture for big sculptures, but I found a jewelry caster, this wonderful Egyptian man. We didn't speak the same language, but we did with our hands and with our gestures. And so he could only make small sculptures for me. Uh, that were four by seven, and they were cast uh, concentrically, which is a whole old-fashioned way of doing jewelry, but he was able to do these small sculptures. So as a result of that, looking at all these people that I saw in Jerusalem with all these funny hats and these funny clothes, I just was enchanted. And so I produced 25 small brass sculptures that were eventually put on Jerusalem stone mounted which is a beautiful stone to use. I wish I could get more of it here. Um, anyway, I had a big show at the Jerusalem Theater, which was the first time they'd ever had a show. And now it's a tradition there. So I had a wonderful year of just having a good time and producing really a very interesting uh, body of work there. So. Well, and that's a pretty significant story that they started doing that art show annually after you, so. Yeah. That's, that's kind of amazing. Uh, they had different artists, you understand. Yeah. But, but the concept, was, I love that. Yeah, it, it kicked was, it off. Was up. <laughs> yeah. So that was And Mia? Cool. Uh, yeah, so I went to Tel Aviv in 2014 for what I thought would be a three month trip <laughs> to explore a new place and um, see the art scene. And I was always interested in Israeli artists and I ended up staying I've been living there now for six years. So <laughs> three months turned into six years. I made Aliyah in 2014, uh, 2015. 
and have been installing public pieces of mosaic ever since. But I think um, what my grandmother's saying about Jerusalem stone really makes me think because like we are both able, we're utilizing the materials that we had in Israel or have. And for myself, it's, I'm using this Middle Eastern tile all the time. And I think that's really inspired me even, like I was just shocked by all the beautiful tiles that I was able to find in Israel that I never found here. So it's, that's been really interesting. I've been incorporating those pieces in my work. So still practicing artist in Israel and um, it's a very important place for me. Love that. Um, so tell me a little bit more because someone actually asked this as a question and you've alluded to it, but it seems to me like you guys are very collaborative in your own ways. Can you talk to me a little bit about um, how you inspire one another and how, I know you have this very special relationship. Tell us. Mia, do you want to take this one first? Yeah, I, I mean, I think behind each of our projects, we are always behind the scenes chatting with each other and, you know, emailing our proposals that we, we write and helping each other with prices and our websites. And I think we both have um, different skills that we can kind of lend th to the other person. So whenever, when I first started writing proposals, I would call my grandma and say, can you look at this? Like, did I, she actually sent me one of her proposals and I modeled my proposal after hers. And, um, and then I'll like help her get an online store going. So I think we're, we, we collaborate all, maybe not in the physical sense that we're not making pieces together, but we're always talking to each other um, and working through problems and um, so many things come up in public art that are similar for both of us. So, yeah, it's really I talk to a lot of oh. I talk to a lot of artists who wish they had an artist support group, and it's kind of amazing to have that internally within your family. Well, we, yeah. yeah, it's Nia is absolutely marvelous. I consider her my best friend. She's really <laughs> terrific. <laughs> and I love her to pieces and it she's just wonderful all the things that I can't do she does all these electronic things she started this store for me which was really marvelous and I you know she's she's a terrific businesswoman and I guess a lot of it she's learned from me and a lot of it she's learned just because she's she's who she is but I she He's got, she, one of the, one of my tenets to any young artist is throw 10 balls up in the air and maybe one of them will come down. Well, Mia throws 10, 20 balls up in the air <laughs> and she's just, I mean, people just love her work and she's, she's quite, she's really quite amazing. And I think our relationship is unique in the sense that we really do work together as a team. Uh, as a matter of fact, many years ago, I have to tell that we did do one sculpture together. We did a bird, a bird house for the Red Sox, and it was a competition, and we won, I think. And it was really, it was so silly. We probably did it 2010, I don't know yeah. how many years ago, but it was wonderful. And it was just the Red Sox, and we had incorporated a little bird house in the middle of <laughs> I think that was the beginning and we really worked well together even then when she was a lot younger but I love her to pieces and she's been a great help to me in many many ways. I, I, I hear great. a challenge to make you work together. <laughs> yeah we have to do a 3D um, bronze mosaic so yeah and I'm, my, my grandmother also is amazing in the community and she gives back so much and so I think all of us look to her you know about doing good and, and meeting new people and trying to engage with the communities around us. So that's been really special to watch her do that too. That's something I really appreciate about both of your works. And um, something I love is that, Nancy, you have pieces all over the greater Boston area that are so iconic. Um, Mia, you less so far, but you're working on an exciting new project. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I received a um, transformative art grant from the city of Boston. And so it's still in the works where it's gonna be. Um, the prompt was to make a piece that addresses COVID-19, but have people all over the city work on it, but not physically work on it. So the idea is to have um, a child from every neighborhood of Boston, 23 different neighborhoods, kind of draw a heart. And then we're gonna incorporate that into the mosaic. I, I'm really hoping that it's gonna be in the near the Boston Medical Center sort of 
for the healthcare workers. So that'll be my first piece in the Boston area. So I'm excited about that. I love it. And I love that you, you're both doing such significant pieces around COVID. I have a new book that will be coming out, a photography book that will be coming out uh, in the spring. And it shows the ducks being dressed up in various costumes, various things, when the Bruins won the, the Stanley Cup or the Red Sox won. So anyway, look for it. It's going to be really exciting. And it also includes, it has the mask and it has um, Black's Matter. And it, it's just, it's a fabulous book. I think uh, only photography, uh, Black Lives Matter. Wow. Sorry. Yeah, so I look for that. I think you'll find it really interesting. It's a history of the ducks being dressed up. Very interesting. I have to tell you, that's kind of my dream come true. We'll make sure we send the link out to everyone. <laughs> that's great. That's really I true. love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Laura, Laura, I think most artists would be more sensitive than, you know, Nancy when people put things on their artwork and she embraces it and is so excited about it. And so her ducks have become sort of this canvas of what's happening in the world. And I don't think as many artists would be embrace that as much as she does. So I think that's a really beautiful point. And I think that's something really special about you, Nancy, and your work and you too, Mia, that I, <laughs> it's really incredible to me that it's an inspiration to me that you make these public pieces that are not just there for people to look at and appreciate, but to really engage with. Thank you. It's really Thank special. You know, there's lots more, you know, but there's a big 40,000 square uh, ice uh, <laughs> skate park under the Sacred Bridge, too, that is something that we all uh, should enjoy that I did and was responsible for. I'm the skateboard granny, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> Look at all these different talents. <laughs> Yeah, lots of community work. It's important. We all have to give back. That's the most important thing that we all must do, particularly now. And we must love everybody despite our feelings. Yeah. Well, and I think it's incredible how you both use your arts and your voices to make really important statements about community and about the need to be more involved with community. So I think that's a pretty special thing you both do. Thank so you. thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, we are just about out of time, but I will say we have one more question, Nancy, about your COVID statue. Can you tell us how big is it? Well, it isn't really very big. I would like to make it bigger and have it in some health care or some hospital. Um, I have various heads of hospitals that I'm thinking about uh, talking to about seeing if they would, because I think it's historic and it's a very important statement of where we are today, hopefully where we will not be in some, at some point. The sculpture uh, at the very end, it, it, the people are in a, a sort of diamond and the idea was that it started with one person and then it got to be very, very big. And then at the very end, hopefully we will get back down to zero and we'll conquer this horrible uh, thing that we have all gone through. It's very serious. And hopefully I can find a home for it. Well, hopefully by speaking that out into existence, we'll see, hopefully something good will come of that, Thank you right? Very much. Absolutely. Um, well, it's hard to believe that we are already at time, but it has been so nice to be here with both of you. And I think there's a lot more we could discuss in detail about pieces in the future, but um, I love hearing about your family connections. So thank you. Um, for all of you out there, um, we are actually announcing our entire J Live season um, within the next couple of days. So I hope you'll stay tuned. And um, coming your way in the mail, there will actually be a new J Arts magazine with an interview by Mia and Nancy that will expand upon a little bit of what we've talked about. So I hope you'll all look that up. So um, thank you both so much for being here with me today. Um, as the rest of you know, J Arts does not exist uh, without generous community support like yours. So if you like what you see today, I hope you will join us in making this happen. Um, and Mia and Nancy, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.